After taking a look at some assumptions many people have about smart speakers, let's dive deeper into how speech assistants actually work. I'll focus mostly on Alexa, as this platform is easily extendable by third-party developers like us, without the need of also providing a smartphone app like it is necessary for Google or for Apple. As such, Alexa allows you to create voice-only experiences. To make it clear, Alexa is the voice assistant AI technology, which is also integrated by other manufacturers. Amazon's own smart speakers are called Echo. These smart speakers are based on Alexa, but are not the only Alexa-powered devices out there. When talking to an Echo speaker, you first need to say the wake word, like Alexa. This was set by the manufacturer so that it's seldom used in a normal conversation and easily distinguishable from other words by its unique sound. Once the speaker recognizes this word offline, it wakes up and starts recording what you say for the next few seconds. Typically, this is then transmitted to the Amazon Alexa service in the cloud. This backend decides what to do and how to respond, and then sends back text to your echo speaker that will speak back to you. If we look at the same scenario in more detail, there are many services involved in the backend. This combination of those makes up what Alexa is. You can also use each of those services individually. For example, the service that converts a recording of speech to written text is called Amazon Lex. The logic of a skill is written in a Lambda function, which is a JavaScript or Python implementation. It's often difficult to understand what an AI can do and what is fake when you see demos of human-like robots. Imagine a scenario like this. You get home from work and start talking to your smart speaker. You say, Alexa, yesterday I talked to this person at work and it totally hurt my feelings. Alexa then responds with, yeah, I totally understand you. What exactly happened? This is not possible now. Smart speakers currently cannot have free-form conversations and really understand you. What does work is that you can execute commands. An example could be that you say, Alexa, please set a reminder in 15 minutes to turn off the oven. Where Alexa then responds with, okay, I will remind you in 15 minutes to turn off the oven. The cool thing is that you don't have to say exactly this sentence for getting the result you want. If you say instead, Alexa, remind me on June 11th at 18 p.m. to turn off the oven. It will have the same intended result. So the magic of smart speakers is not that you can talk about anything to them, but they should be able to match your natural language to a set of commands that they understand, even if those sentences differ from the exact phrases they were trained on. Let's look a bit more into the details. The smart speaker needs to transform your free form spoken text into written text. Then it tries to match it into what you're trying to do. Technically, this is called an intent. And out of those intents, you can then program your logic to extract required information out of the sentence. For example, the time of the reminder. Also here, it doesn't matter how you exactly state the time. If you say in 10 minutes or an exact time, both have the same result. All this information then reaches your backend, where you act accordingly. For example, by setting the timer. Then Alexa needs to talk back to the user. The answer it speaks is not generated by an artificial intelligence. It's a pre-written text that you as a designer and developer wrote. Of course, this text can be customized through placeholders. But essentially, you simply send back text, which Alexa then reads out aloud. That's it. Let's summarize the architecture of a speech service using the example of a social life planner. First, you start your custom skill by saying the wake word like Alexa. You instruct it to start your own skill through the name you have given it. For example, Alexa, start social life planner. The user can then say a variety of things that your skill is prepared for. These are called intents and are different things that the user can trigger. For example, the user could say that she wants to go for a walk tomorrow and would like to find others to join her. Or she can ask which courses she has tomorrow. These are different functionalities, which then go into different paths of your functionality. These intents can contain slots, which is information contained within the intents. You can use them to really do exactly what is required. For example, when you want to go for a walk, or for which day you would like to get the list of courses. All this compromises the natural language understanding model, 
which you provide to the Alexa service. How exactly does the natural language understanding know what to expect? For the intents, you train the scenarios by supplying examples. Technically, these are called utterances. You simply provide a list of sample sentences that each would trigger the same intent. Usually, a good starting point is 5 to 10 sentences per intent. The information you can extract, the entities, can have many different forms. For example, dates, locations, numbers, names, and more. In general, it's also good to learn from the usage of your skill. You can, for example, continually integrate new utterances that people are saying, but that you simply didn't think about yourself when you provided a list of sample sentences. All this has the goal to make your skill understand as much as possible to make it look like you're talking to a really intelligent service that is helpful and does what your users expect.